This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 136 Fidel. Now, we will need you to do a grid search of the spirit realm, Alarian was saying to all of the dragon spirits in the throne room's mirror. Mephis wasn't really listening, as this was old news for it. The green dragon spirit instead cleaned their wings and occasionally glanced over at Iolaire, who twittered sweetly back. In contrast, Evren was practically at attention as a plan was laid out. This was for Fidel, the man that Anwar loved. It would do whatever was necessary. Zippel sharpened its claws against a rock, but seemed to be nodding along with the plan. Lana kept trying to get Zippel's attention to engage in some mock wrestling, but the red dragon spirit merely narrowed its eyes at the other dragon spirit as if it was not interested whatsoever. It wasn't until Lana jumped on Zippel's back or tried to that it was made clear that Zippel had anticipated this. The red dragon spirit somehow flipped over so that its four claws grabbed Lana and threw the turquoise dragon spirit into Elderon's mighty side. Elderon hardly noticed. He was staring dreamily at its own reflection. Zippel made a rasping sound that Valerius interpreted as a laugh. Lana got up, looking slightly dazed, but then the turquoise dragon was ready for another go. Valerius hoped that one of them was listening to Alarian. Scylla brought its wings in tighter as Lana was launched across the lair again so it wouldn't be jostled. Like Esme, the blue dragon spirit's expression was thoughtful as it took in what Alarian, Mephis, and Vazeth had already accomplished and their idea that if Fidel and the longer lost spirits were in the spirit realm, they would be around somewhere nearish the crater, but farther out than the others. Zephira had begun the talk with one eyebrow raised, showing its disbelief that Larian and Mephis had a plan that involved no benefit for themselves. But as the talk continued, both eyebrows had lifted with surprise and then pleasure. Valerius felt strangely proud, though he had nothing to do with Larian and Mephis's change of character. That is so not true, Valerius, Caden sent him as he leaned against Valerius's side. They were sitting on one of the cozy velvet couches that had been brought into the throne room. Instead of the empty space it usually was, there was a long table laden with food and another with drink. There were couches and comfy chairs situated all around the space, creating sitting areas for singles or more for groups, unlike that night when they had a single pathetic couch to collapse upon. Your insistence on being his and Mephis' friend is what did it, Valerius countered. That had a role. Caden took a drink of a grapefruit-flavored IPA, but it was you extending that hand to him, admitting that you needed them, trusting them that really did it. It's your friendship, Valerius, that made Alarian and Mephis feel like they had something to lose or to gain. Mephis was sitting next to Raziel. Their bodies were close enough to touch. They had nodded to one another, and Raziel had not objected or moved away, or had Mephis move when the green dragon spirit had sprawled next to the black dragon spirit Nile Air. They were not completely comfortable in each other's presence, as was indicated by the two swift looks when one of them moved unexpectedly, but no growls, no smoke or fire, or even narrowed eyes. Iolair was happily situated between them. It had greeted all of the dragon spirits with a kiss, a press of foreheads, that had seemed to calm and delight the other spirits. Raziel had held itself quite still as this had occurred. But again, there was no aggression. Truly, it was a miracle. Raziel's all cool with everybody up in its space, sort of like you, Caden chuckled. I look forward to it being only us again, Valerius said, kissing Caden's temple. It is Iolair that is the social butterfly. Be honest, you miss them all. Raziel's gone flying with every single dragon, even when Iolair was too tired to go out, Caden pointed out. Well, now that we know they cannot leave their lairs when we are in human form without risking us, I want to give Raziel as much flying time as it wishes, Valerius claimed. Sure, sure, I believe you, but I still think that Raziel and you are getting used to people being underfoot, Hayden teased. 
Perhaps. I did not mind when all the dragon spirits tried to kiss you through the mirror, Valerius admitted. The dragon spirits had pressed their foreheads as close to Caden as they could. Caden had told him about how he had kissed every one of the dragon spirits in the spirit realm. Caden was now considered one of them, even apart from Iolaire. He was the honorary little dragon, and Valerius could not be more chuffed about it. I believe we could handle things here for two hours while you search, Alarian said to the dragon spirits. You have enough intoxicating liquids to drink, Scylla pointed out with half a smile. Um, yes, I told everyone we can get drunk while you are gone, and that we don't have the hangover when you get back. Alarian lifted an iced martini glass as if saluting the dragon spirits. I'll second that, Esme chuckled as she tipped her gin and tonic, dirty with lots of olives, towards Scylla. You know we'll feel awful while you're gone, Tess sighed as he sucked on a blue moon, so we might as well drown our sorrows. And though we know you shall do your best, we also know that you might not succeed, Anwar said, his face pale and jaw tense. He was holding onto a glass of white wine so tightly that Valerius feared he might shatter it. This is but the first night that we will look, Raziel said, surprising Valerius. Even more, as it added, Mephis's plan is sound. We must trust in it, and we will continue to look. Mephis blinked a little too rapidly for it to be normal before it said, With all of us looking from the point of entry, I can only believe we will find something. I know. But Anwar still looked tense and miserable. Kayla came and put an arm around his shoulders. I know that this is little comfort, but we are in this with you, Anwar. Anwar gave her a watery smile and then a kiss. She hugged him firmly. Mephis lifted its massive head and turned towards the lair opening. Vazith is here. She is ready to assist. Oh, I was hoping the yellow dragon might come too, Kayla said. It might get here soon. The banana yellow one? Tez lifted an eyebrow in disgust. It was more a mustard yellow, I believe, Esme said. No, it was a bright yellow like the sun, Kayla stamped her foot. When everyone looked away from her, she said, well, bananas and mustard are good to eat, so even if you're right, it's still beautiful. Absolutely, Kayla, Jahara said kindly as she sipped a Manhattan with dark red cherries on the bottom of the glass. Yes, exactly, Kayla nodded. What security measures are you taking while we are gone? Zippel asked. My wise women guard every entrance into the throne room. They are backed up by Claw, Jahara answered. Wally's in his rat form and give us notice if anything is going wrong. Marban and Rose are also patrolling, Caden added. And I will be able to hold off anyone else, Shioni said, as she poured herself a glass of sangria from a perspiring drug. Anything less than the behemoth is not a problem. Valerius smiled at Shioni. His heart still felt a little fragile when she spoke of fighting, honestly, when she left his sight. It was getting a little better, but almost losing her had left an indelible mark upon him. Caden felt his anxiety and stroked his thigh. Soon their minds would not be linked. He wasn't sure how he felt about that either. It will be fine. Imagine if they locate Fidel and the others, Valerius. It will be worth it for a few hours apart, Caden reminded him. My head agrees with you, but my heart. Well, we are doing this, Valerius said. I will look forward to the getting drunk part of this evening with you. Raziel met his gaze in the mirror. I will return, Valerius. Nothing will keep me away. Valerius nodded. Do not let my fear affect your courage. You make me braver than I ever was, Raziel said. Do not have too much fun without us, Lana cried as the dragon spirit started to shuffle out. We couldn't, Lana. I love you, Kayla waved desperately. All knew the moment that their dragon spirit left the lair. Their shoulders slumped. They all looked a little grim, and no one spoke for a moment. Valerius wondered how the hell Alarian had done this repeatedly by himself. Valerius could not have. It was not as bad this time as it was the last because he knew that Raziel truly would be back at a time certain. He set a timer on his phone, but still, there was a bit of grief not having Raziel's warmth within him. Thank you so much for doing this, Anwar said before draining his white wine and continuing to hold the glass in a white-knuckled grip. I know. I know how hard this is. 
Fidel would thank you forever if he could, and to all the others that aren't lost. Anwar, you need not thank us, Jahara said as she sipped her Manhattan. This is an unfinished portion of our fight against the behemoth. While we dithered with our own individual problems, our people were being stolen beneath our noses. Indeed, if we get them back, that is the ultimate fuck you to that bastard behemoth. Alarian popped a few cashews into his mouth and washed them down with a large swallow of his martini. Hearing that from you, Alarian, makes me realize just how much things have changed. May passed by him to get a shish kebab and a glass of cold sake. She patted Alarian's shoulder as she went, which had everyone, especially Alarian, raising their eyebrows. Does that mean I get a dance at the wedding? Alarian chortled. May bit off a bit of meat and regarded him with narrow eyes. Maybe. I could make a Dama dance with me if you won't, Alarian wheedled. I've updated his firewall. Her eyes narrowed more. Alarian grinned. I know. I'm debating whether to poke out your eyes with this skewer or dance with you. Both would be excruciating for one of us. May chuckled as she stripped the meat off the skewer and jabbed it in Alarian's direction. I don't know whether to be aroused or afraid, Alarian chuckled uncertainly. May sauntered past him. Both. I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. If you're looking for another story full of hot heroes, romance, and magic set in an alternative world, check out the first book of my series, Cinders and Ashes. Cinders and Ashes, an elaborate gay retelling of Cinderella, but it's so much more than that. It's set in a world with forbidden magic, an heir made to work as a servant at his own estate, hidden heritage, enchanted wolves, and a king who wishes to marry for love. A link to book one is in the description below. Esme shook off her malaise. She went over to replenish her drink with the bartender. Well, I, for one, am going to enjoy this short time without Scylla, because we can talk about all our plans for our dragon spirits without them knowing. You have a plan for Scylla? Caden asked, leaning forward, which allowed Valerius to rub his back. At least this time around, Caden was awake, aware, and with him, not a lifeless body on his lap. Shioni came over and handed him a bottle and a glass of his favorite Barolo. She poured him a large portion. Can I tell? Oh, let me tell, Kayla whined as one of her hands shot into the air like an overeager student's. Indulgently, Esme nodded as she ate her olives. Go ahead, Kayla. Scylla and Lana are going fishing! Both of Kayla's hands were now in the air and were waving like starfish. That sounds like fun? Caden made that sound like a question. Oh, it is. Two water dragons fishing, first in Esme's territory and then in mine. Oh, the different fish, the amount of fish, the lazy days with just the two of us. It will be glorious! Kayla arched back and stretched her fingers to the ceiling. She is really selling it. Now I wish we were going fishing, Caden said to Valerius. Oh, Kayla's gaze was lasered upon him and Valerius. Valerius found himself sitting up straighter, slightly alarmed, maybe more than slightly, as she barreled towards them, skidding to a stop only when her knees touched theirs. You can! You're both coming on your tour this year, and I promise we will fish. Again, with the fist pumping. Though, I promised my people you would make piles of snow, Caden, even if it melts pretty quickly. I promise we will, Caden laughed. Excellent! Fishing and snow. It is perfect. Kayla then swung around and headed towards the sideboard, where she started eating shrimp as if they were swimming away from her. We all deal with being separated from our spirits differently, Shoni whispered and patted his shoulder. The world tour is such a brilliant idea, Caden, Esme said. Well, it seemed the right thing to do to show how we're together in all of this. I may live in Valerius's territory. Our territory, Valerius corrected gently. Caden kissed his cheek. Our territory. But I love the idea of seeing all of yours and being welcome there. You are going to love my territory best, Alarian pronounced. First, we will stay in the mountains in my castle, my Zamok, 
you will have a bedroom in the West Tower where all you can see are trees and snow. We will hunt. There is the best hunting there. And then, then, Caden's eyes were wide. We go to Moscow to the clubs. The nightclubs are the best. We will dance all night into morning. Alarian thrust his hips right, then left. Then we will go into these wonderful little restaurants that serve pelmeni, these little pastry dumplings with minced meat and covered in butter. Butter? Caden blinked rapidly. So good. Melt in your mouth. Best post-drinking and dancing food ever. Alarian kissed the tips of his fingers. And then... Then... Caden was leaning forward so far he might fall off the couch. Valerius grasped the back of his pants to keep Caden from toppling off. We're going to Chernobyl. Alarian's eyes glittered. Such a place of bravery and pathos. You could feel the sacrifices made there. It is epic. Caden sighed and leaned back against the couch, curling by Valerius. Wow, that sounds incredible. I can outdo that in my sleep. May pronounced. I think not, Larian sneered. Great Wall of China, she shut out. Caden blinked. It's a wall, Larian tossed his head. Angkor what? she retorted. Ancient temple, he waved her off. What's exciting about that? Mount Everest, May grinned. It was Larian's turn to blink. She laughed delightedly. Imagine, Caden, when you and I stand atop Mount Everest. And then fly down, she said. And the food in all the different nations, each one is better than the last. Your mouth will thank you as you eat your weight in herbs and meat, noodles and dumplings, and so much more. And if you want nightlife, Shinjuku, Shibuya, Ginza, and more. Um, wow, May, that will be amazing. Caden sounded odd. Indeed, I have already started planning, she said with an affectionate wink. Valerius found himself grinning. To see May wink was something he hadn't even thought she was capable of. And here she was, doing it, naturally, happily, planning and taking Caden on the town, wanting to spend time with him. Valerius would be there, too, but he was chopped meat compared to Caden. He didn't mind at all. He was happy just to come along and watch Caden have a brilliant time. Well, now I'm feeling like I need to up my game, Esme said as the bartender made her another drink. I was thinking of the Eiffel Tower, Neuenstein Castle, Windsor, and of course, Tower of London, at least. Can we do the Jack the Ripper tour? Caden was wide-eyed again. Well, of course, we must. There are several authors that do extraordinary tours that I think you'd enjoy, Esme said. And of course, London, Paris, Rome, Berlin, and so many more places have nightlife to die for. I personally enjoy Berlin's nightclubs best. They never go dark. What you've said sounds incredible too, Esme. Caden shook his head in disbelief. Well, let me give you something to nibble on too. For as much as everyone here is taking you to the wonders of the earth, I plan to offer you a chance to see the wonders of the moon. Jahara said with a smile she couldn't hide. Caden's mouth fell open. What? That was repeated by several people in the room, including Valerius. Jahara lifted her head high. Our space program has advanced to a point where civilians will be able to take a flight around the moon and back. Caden and Valerius, you will be on a flight with me. And I was just excited to see the cities in your territory, Jahara, or go on a photo safari, Caden admitted. We will be doing those things too, of course, but the moon flight will be the pinnacle of the trip, she said. I can't believe it. Wow. Amazing, Jahara. Caden looked stunned. I've got to be able to bring Tilly and my folks on this. Not to mention Wally and Rose. I don't think they'd forgive me if they didn't come. Indeed, Valerius agreed. Shioni gave him a meaningful look. He added quickly, and of course, I could not be without my Shioni. Shioni smiled. Oh, yes. All are welcome, Jahara laughed. I think fishing in snow is better, Kayla muttered. Tez was tenting his fingers rather nervously. He suddenly burst out. While Jahara may be taking you to the stars, I'm going to take you to the bowels of the earth. Caden blinked. Uh, there are many cenotes that we can explore, Tez explained. Ones with water so pure that it looks like air. Caves filled with crystals you've never seen. And then, of course, there are the ancient ruins of the Mayans and learned scholars who explained it all to you 
and make the past come alive. Wow, Tez, I can't wait, Caden grinned. And the food and beaches and nightlife. My territory knows how to enjoy themselves more than any other, Tez enthused. The only one that hadn't spoken was Anwar. He was staring at the empty lair and ticking his fingernails against his empty glass. Caden got up and grabbed the bottle of white wine that Anwar had been drinking. Valerius also got up and went to the sideboard and prepared food for Anwar. Both he and Caden met in the middle. Anwar blinked when he saw them there. Oh, thank you, Anwar blinked and awkwardly offered his glass for Caden to fill. He was about to take the plate, but Valerius said, I'll hold it. You need a hand free to drink and eat. I do not know if I can do either. Anwar swallowed. I'm sorry, Caden. Everyone is speaking of their plans for your coming, but I have not yet yet decided upon mine. Though I am so grateful and happy to have you both come. Anwar, it doesn't matter. If everyone just let us hang out in their homes, it would be more than enough. Caden patted Anwar's arm. My home is your home, Caden. Anwar smiled. There was a boom. It came from the lair. A dragon spirit had returned. Anwar drew in a sharp breath. He was trembling. They've come back early, Valerian said, eyes fixed upon the mirror. Valerius wondered which dragon spirit would appear, but it was not a dragon. It was a person, a woman, followed by another person and another and another. They found them, Esme gasped and covered her mouth with her hands. Anwar staggered towards the mirror. As each person emerged, they ran towards the mirror and there was a flash of light. Valerius knew that they were returning to their bodies. That was what had happened with Landry. Anwar, though, was looking for one special person. Sakra! Anwar cried, tears in his eyes. Tahira! He said the names of the sister and the videographer who had alerted them to what was going on. The two beautiful women rushed to the mirror and disappeared another flash of light. He must be among them. He must. He must. Anwar cried. The flood of people became a trickle. And then there was no one. Anwar tottered. He looked like he was going to fall over. He's not there. Anwar whispered. Maybe you missed him. There were so many, Kayla suggested. I didn't. I would have seen him, Anwar said faintly. If we did not find him this time, we will have the dragons go back out. Alarian assured him. If he was not with them, where would he be? Anwar swayed. Valerius and Caden caught him, but just then there was a voice that called out, That is the one! You say Anwar is this way? Let me get to him! Fidel? Anwar blinked rapidly. He staggered towards the mirror with Caden and Valerius at his sides. A beautiful man with dark eyes and hair appeared in the mouth of the tunnel. His head turned and he saw Anwar. Anwar put his hands on the mirror with a broad smile. The beautiful man ran towards him. Anwar, he cried. And then, just before he reached Anwar, he too disappeared. Anwar cried out and scrabbled at the mirror. Anwar, he's in his body, Valerius reminded him. His body. Anwar spun towards the door. Everett appeared in the mirror, and Anwar gasped as he was joined again with his dragon spirit. Anwar, go, he awaits you, Everin cried. Anwar was the first one out of the door, startling the wise women, but all the rest of the dragons just ended up running after them towards the tower where Fidel's body lay. The dragon spirits joined with each of them fully just as they got to the door of the tower. Anwar threw open the door and took two staggering steps inside. Fidel was sitting up in bed. He opened his arms and called to the silver dragon shifter. Anwar. Fidel called in a weak voice. Fidel! Fidel, my heart! Anwar raced to Fidel's side, wrapping the other man in his arms, rocking him and weeping tears of joy. We found him. Raziel sounded like a proud hunter. You did. Valerius praised the black dragon spirit. Thank you, Raziel. Thank you to all of the dragon spirits. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Dragon's Reign. It's hard to believe that it's almost over. If you're listening to this podcast episode on Spotify, I really want to encourage you to come over to the YouTube channel so that you can see the beautiful artwork of Caden, Valerius, and all the dragon shifters in a special celebration video. 
after Dragon's Reign is over at chapter 140. I'll be posting trailers and behind the scenes content for the next Gay Romance Story podcast. If you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to know. I'm sad that Dragon's Reign is ending, but very excited to bring you the next story as well. So I hope you'll join us for the next adventure.